So today we'll try to create a login flow for this uh, this application. Last couple of videos we looked at the uh, the prerequisites you need for auth authentication, um, password hashing, and secure tokens. Now let's try to to put it to use. So I already made like basic uh, a basic login page uh, to get things started, which is has this uh, form that. Um, once you submit, it will post uh, the data to to um, to this uh, login endpoint. So, for example, we can do a test and a test. And if we see what the output is, it is probably going to fail. Uh, actually, you get a four hundred four because uh, I haven't set up this endpoint yet. So we have the get endpoint just to go to the page, but we also need a post endpoint. And here we need to, uh, here we need to extract some data. We need to extract a, a username and a, a, um, a password. So for that, we actually need a new struct which has the username and the password and then we can extract it here by saying uh, web um, maybe I need no we do have web so I can say um, web form and it's the login form and then that should make the data available and let's just whenever that happens let's just print uh, that here we are we are trying to log in and we can just return okay uh, when we do that so now if we go here and we look and we uh, try to log in nothing happens nothing happens let's try again uh, can I do a never save? So there's still 404. And here's the post data. So we are trying to to post here. And are we sure we are posting? Does say post here. So for some reason that does not work. Ah, because I keep forgetting you need to actually register it. So otherwise it's not available. And maybe there's a way to automatically um, register everything but that is not something we'll look at here in this video so now it finally works so we can uh, we can log in and we also get a response back but we're not really logging in yet right so just to mimic let's so let's say um, we go through process of validating the user and everything succeeds uh, what do we need to do? I think we need to say um, redirect the user to uh, to somewhere. We can redirect them to to words, and let's see if that works. So we'll try to wait until it's compiled. Let me get rid of this. Then we uh, we say okay, let's log in. It works, and we redirect it here. So I think that's kind of what we want. Maybe there's not really much on the on the home page. Uh, anyway, it's fun to be able to redirect. Okay, so with that in mind, what are the steps we need to do? We need to um, uh, we need to try to validate uh, the login, and we need to. 
um, then decide what to do. If it's successful, redirect to, to words. Otherwise, redirect to just home. And how do you validate the login? So we need to, uh, well, maybe we don't. Let's say, let us say, logged in and we'll, we'll use, let me see what I call it, called password. Maybe that is not the best. Let's make a new module called auth and uh, we'll say validate login and we take the username and the password and then we can say if logged in we'll do these two things okay so now we need to do this stuff we need to make a file here and we need a function called validate, validate login, which takes the username. And I guess we don't really need it. We need to take ownership. Uh, so let me go back here and change it up like that. Okay, so what do we need here? Well, first we need to get the user from the database. And we had this example, list users, uh, which we can just copy a bit of stuff from. We don't need this prefix in here. And then we can say, use this stuff. We establish a connection and we get some users out. And um, let's see, let me just remember how you filter things. Okay, it is just filter. So we want a user where the username is equal to, we we'll call this like the incoming username and the incoming password. So the username is equal to the incoming username and um, is there like a unique or something like that? Doesn't seem like it. So let's just take the first. And it's okay if there is no such user. And I just thought of something. We can look at that later. So what is this? And here we don't need self, I think we just do a schema. I'm not sure what all these arrows are about. But anyway, so we have the, yeah, nothing is really working. Do I need to say create? Okay. And it's not called username, it's actually called email. Yes, so it's called email. So here we get an unknown, which is really annoying that it's, but anyway, it should be a user and it's probably an optional. Yeah, so we can say match result. And if it is some, some user, we do one thing. Uh, if there is none, we do another thing. And if there's some error, uh, we do also a third thing. Here, probably, we want to later on add logging. But for now we can return false 
And here we should also return false. And here is the interesting thing. So we do have in the, let me actually quit that one. In the password module, we have this verify password. So we can reuse that, use create password, verify password. And here we will just do result is verification of this password. So what is this thing? It returns a result. So we kind of need to unwrap that. And here we'll, we'll also just return false. And I think I think that does it. This one we can also ignore for now. Okay. So let's actually do cargo run binary users. And you can see we have a couple of users and it doesn't show the password itself, but which is kind of like problematic when it's test users, but if I recall this password, well, we can actually see that. I don't know why I'm trying to remember it. We can just go in here. Uh, do, 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 do. Add test users, there it is. So the, we add this password one, two, and three for test one, two, and three. So now if I go here and I say just some random stuff, I'm redirected to the home page that kind of indicates that it failed. If I do test one, password one, we do get directed here. So that's pretty nice. It uh, it actually already kind of works. It already kind of works. This is supposed to be a append header. Okay. So actually, let's try something else. Let's send login failed. And inside the template, uh, we can say up here that the, the target is, is um, login message. I wonder if this will, will work. Here there can be a login message. And let's see what happens if we say login? Okay, so we do get login failed. This should probably be paragraph. And now we also have this basic uh, message box. And if we then do manage to log in, it gets uh, sent there. So that's a bit annoying. I do, I kind of want, want it to be like a conditional target. Okay, actually to just for now, let's get rid of this. And here we'll have a variable that is the, the error message. And then in here, uh, we need a context, we need uh, an error message. And we'll send this into the page. And then we simply add the page content here. So let's see if that works. Uh, we should do this. We log in. We, we log in. I don't know what's happening. Okay. 
so now we cannot here we need the context and context that insert an empty error message so let's try that okay now if i don't log in correctly it reloads the page it says login failed it's okay for now maybe we should preserve the username but whatever if i do type things correctly I get uh, redirected here. So that works. There is actually one crucial thing that we haven't looked at, uh, which is the following. I don't need to log in to use it. So we need to somehow um, we need to somehow make sure that you cannot access the content if you're not logged in. And the way you normally do that is using middleware. But actually, I think I don't want to do that in this video. Um, I think uh, I think we're gonna stop here, and then in the next uh, video we'll send a, a token to the user well, if they log in successfully, uh, and then we'll check that that token is present in the middleware. So, see you in the next one. Bye bye.